In a recent video, I shared my Obsidian Publish Vault, a way for me to share some of my notes online with other people and an alternative to sort of traditional uh, reverse chronological long form articles that we're so used to with being shared online. And during that video, I mentioned that one of the reasons people might be put off is because of the cost of it, especially as now it has gone up to $20 a month per site or $196 a month uh, for a year. And this is more than some cheaper uh, website blogging options would be, more than some people's budgets can afford. But there is a free alternative which I've mentioned, which you can see here that I set up as a test version before I moved on to the Obsidian Publish. So in today's video, I'm going to take you through this free alternative to Obsidian Publish, what it is and how it works. Then we're going to look at some sync options so that you can get the notes that are on your computer to be uploaded and match the ones that are online and update those as you need to. Then we'll go for a setup guide for how you can set this system up and how you can get it running today. And finally, I'll share what I think is better, this one or Obscene Publish and who I think it's, each option is right for. So let's dive in. Obscene uses Markdown files, and these were originally designed for publishing online. It was a way to write quickly online uh, and have formatting and stylization correctly. So if you wanted to, you could just upload these markdown files to a tool like uh, Jekyll and a web host that used Jekyll, and then you would have uh, pages published online. Now there would be some downsides of that, such as you wouldn't have these Wikipedia style links where you just do the double square brackets and then you can move across to another page. And also you wouldn't have features like the graph view or uh, backlinks, which notes mention this one as well, but you could just upload them. So if you wanted to take this route, you'd have to update any uh, Wikipedia style links that you had made and make these hyperlinks for your documents, linking to the name of the file. And at this point, it kind of feels like going down the traditional publishing routes uh, where you have a blog and you update those things there. Now that's an option you could do, um, but then you might as well just use a regular blogging system, in my opinion. So luckily someone has come across and solved these problems for us using some plugins and some tools to help, uh, to help get around them and created this nice package that we can use to create our own uh, digital gardens online using Jekyll, as I mentioned, which uses Markdown to create website pages. So here is Maxime Villacourt's uh, website where he has a guide going through how to set it up. And I'll have a link to this below in the comments. So if you want to follow along when we get to the setup part, you can follow along his instructions. And he created this set of packages. Let's go back. And he created this set of packages on GitHub, which you can then fork and use that for your own things. Now, uh, here's an overview of the technical setup that we're going to go through to use this. We have GitHub, which holds all the files, including our notes, and also the files to help make the Jekyll website uh, work and run. Then we have Netlify. They provide static website hosting services, and they will distribute content to anyone who comes along to read it and they monitor the GitHub repository for any updates, any changes, and immediately recreate the website that you've made. And the best thing about Netlify is they have a free version, which should be great for anything you need to do because it works from Git. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, GitHub is this uh, online code repository where it allows people to collaborate and work together and share changes that people are making um, so that groups and teams can work together on developing one big project while they each work on different parts of code. We're not interested in any of that pretty much. We're basically interested in the fact that it gives free hosting for markdown files and stuff like this. And in fact, with uh, GitHub, you can even just deploy a simple Jekyll website for free 
using GitHub pages. However, using Netlify allows us to do multiple versions, uh, have multiple sites running if we wanted to, and we're going to need to do some strange customizations to make sure that we have these uh, Wikipedia links and stuff like this. So there's a whole load of GitHub terminology which will probably be mentioned in this video, but uh, you don't really need to know about it, you just need to follow them. Now, the tricky part for me, and the part which really kind of put me off, is the part of syncing files. So in Maxime's uh, recommended setup guide, he suggests that you create a local version of Jekyll running on your computer um, using Ruby and downloading things like this. And then with that, you can, uh, you can have your local version, you can see what changes you're making here, and then you can sync those changes up. Uh, I didn't do that because I was just trying this out for fun. I wanted to see what it, what it looked like. And also you don't need to do that. If you're not like a really big developer coder, then you don't need to have your own local environment to do these things. Uh, you can just make changes to markdown files and they'll be updated. So I didn't bother with that. Uh, you can if you want to. At the other extreme of the spectrum, you could just use the browser to edit the files in GitHub and you could drag and drop and upload files using the GitHub web app. Again, I don't think this is a great option because that's quite heavy friction, especially if you're trying to update files that you've already uploaded, um, especially if you're trying to do this with a lot of files and stuff like this. That's not really a great way to go about it. So um, instead, what you could use is the GitHub desktop app, and then you could sync your files from GitHub and bring them down to your computer. So you have a local backup of your files, and then you push your changes back to GitHub. When you've updated those files, you push them up, uh, and then GitHub will update the version there. So that's one way to do it. But then we run into some issues about how do we manage our vaults? Are we going to have uh, one vault, which rules them all? And if we do that, then we're going to need to include these Jekyll files into our vault. We're going to need to have the GitHub app based in our vault. And we're also going to have to, you know, maybe we need to share, publish all of our notes up to GitHub as well. That may not be great if you want to keep some notes private, if you don't want to display them to the world. So the other option is to create a separate vault, which you'll have to sync and to publish things up online. And then you have your own personal vault, which you keep separate. But then you have the issue about syncing changes between these vaults. Are you going to manually do that, copy any file that you edit and, and move it across? Or are you going to uh, to try and automatically do it? Now, if you're manually doing it, then how are you going to find the files that you want to copy across? Are you just going to have to do it every time you edit a file that you want to put up and then copy that file, move it across to the other one and then sync those changes? Uh, also, what about if you're on mobile and you make a change there and how do you upload it and update it on desktop? Um, there's all these kind of things when you're trying to do it manually. So I tried to do it automatically. This was my idea. So I had Hazel set up to sync a folder in my vault, which I called publish. So the idea was to publish it online. Uh, and it would automatically notice if any changes had been made to the files there, and then sync those across with a, another vault, another folder. Uh, and that would then be able to sync with GitHub and go up online and be published. Uh, and then I had a GitHub client app set up on, on my iPad so I could update changes from the iPad as well as one set up on the Mac so that I could update changes from the Mac. Now, in my Obsidian Publish video, I said this was complicated and a bit crazy. And I think you'll see why you're seeing why now. Yeah, this is the, these are the kind of decisions debates that I went on. But that was basically my system, two volts, uh, my personal vault here, uh, the publish vault here, and then the changes would be synced across using Hazel. And then I would have to publish uh, and remember to sync and update using the GitHub desktop app. And basically, uh, trying to remember to do the GitHub push that was the point where the system broke down for me. That was too much friction for me. And so I didn't really keep 
updating it or, or using it like that. But maybe it could work for you. Anyway, I think now is the time to go through the process of setting up this system. So what we need to do is first of all, go to Maxime's uh, Digital Garden Jekyll template. Again, link below to get to this one. Uh, make sure, of course, you've got your GitHub account set up already. Then we're going to go use this template. So now we have uh, my GitHub address and we're going to create a test folder, a description, a, a test of the Obsidian publish. And uh, we could make it public or private. Public means all our notes will be visible to anyone. Private means they'll be private. So let's do private uh, because I'm going to keep it private. Okay, so it's creating my repository right now. And this is literally just duplicating across everything in Maxime's uh, system. So now it will look exactly like the digital guards and template that he created. And in fact, I think, uh, yeah, if I go here, you can preview exactly what it will look like. This is the exact content that you'll see. Welcome, take a look at your first note. Uh, now, uh, the next step is to go into Netlify and create a new site from Git. Uh, you need to connect GitHub. I'm already authorized, so I can create it. And then find the vault, publish test, uh, deploy master base, yes, Jekyll build, publish directory as site, great, deploy site. And so now the site deployment is in progress and it's given me a default domain. I can then change the domain set settings so I could add a custom domain if I wanted to. I could set this up here and, and verify it. Uh, I'm not going to go through that now. It involves involve CNAME settings. Uh, let's just open it up and see has it published. It hasn't come through yet. So while that is in the progress of deploying, I'm going to edit this a bit uh, in the desktop to show you exactly how it could work. So index is the index page. So I could edit this file like this. And as you can see, it's using, you know, markdown styles here. Welcome. This is just garden. But we've also got some code blocks that he's used uh, to just change some of the format. <coughs> And one of the key differences is the use of YAML front matter. Now you can use this actually in Obsidian as well. And I have used it in a few cases for uh, denoting uh, aliases and also titles of pages. But the use that you have uh, for here is it allows you to set a permalink a URL for each page, as well as things like set the title. If you want a different title, then uh, then the title that's in your uh, vault system, the one that you use your double links for. So at the moment it's home. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the front matter because this is the front matter I want. And if you're confused about setting it up, you can just copy it here uh, and then duplicate that as a duplicate page. But what I will do is I'll edit the content here. So let's just change it. Welcome to my test digital garden. Look at that. I doubled my Y. Okay. So we've got that there. Uh, yeah, let's leave that one there. Start using Maxime Villa, Villa Quartz, uh, Jekyll Digital Garden Templates. Okay. He's got the extra stuff there. It was made by Chris Wilson. Uh, let's just do, it was set up. It's probably actually more great. It was set up. Okay. So I've just created that. Let's, uh, but now I have to commit these changes. I have to say what I've done. Update index makes sense. Personalized a little for a video on YouTube. Now the problem of course with committing changes like this is it can get quite confusing. Uh, 
Uh, let's just go commit change. So there we go. I have set that up, uh, published those changes. So now it will appear in a moment when that comes up. Let's go back to um, pages. I can edit the about page, write some stuff about me. Notes, this would be where my notes would go. So at this point, I could add a file. I could upload a file from my own system. And this could be a way to manually upload files, or I could create a new file itself. Now, I don't want to do either of that because as I said, this way of manually uploading files uh, takes quite a long time. Again, I just actually want to display uh, title. In this case, they haven't set a uh, URL. They didn't need one, but they you do need to set a title whenever you're publishing a page here. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to download GitHub Desktop, if you haven't already. I'm going to set up uh, a sync with my repository. So let's uh, clone the repository and we need publish test. This one I've just created. So I've already signed in to my GitHub account because I've set this up before, and now I can clone it. So what's gonna happen is it's cloned this and it's created a version on my computer. Uh, and so now if I, uh, I can reveal in Finder and it shows the publish test folder. I've already set this up so it syncs with my iCloud folder where my second brain is. And so I've gained a new vault inside my folder where I can make these changes. Now to make sure that you clone in the right place, if you want to set it up for the local, uh, for your second brain that's in iCloud, make sure that you set the local path down here as the place where you want it to sync to. So I've already set this up in the past. Uh, so you can see it's in iCloud because that's where I keep my second brain at the moment. If you set this up like this, then it will work. Um, you'll be able to, to save your files into iCloud and go there. So with all that done, let's just see how it's coming along. Has it uploaded? Well, it started and it's deployed the first change, but it hasn't deployed my new change that I've made here. So what I can't see in here, actually Netlify says that the changes have gone through. So let's just try and uh, force reload. Oh, look, there they are. They've gone through already. It was probably just cached and that's why it didn't display correctly. And now you can see I've adapted it. It's got some information here. I can add more notes and stuff like that. So I think now it's time to consider which is the right option for you. Obviously the big advantage of using this solution of GitHub and, and Netlify is that it is free. You could start for free and set it up how you want. However, there is more friction and that was the reason why I didn't continue to use it myself. I found that I just wasn't making these changes, wasn't pushing them. In fact, I'm actually not even pushing that many changes to my own, uh, to the built-in solution that I've gained, it's partially because of life events at the moment. Uh, but certainly having that option of editing it there, having the files all in my system in one vault is, uh, is a real advantage to me. I'm a real believer in just keeping this one vault there. So for me, I think that it's worth paying for Obsidian Publish, especially as I can also uh, help support the developers of Obsidian who have given away this amazing application for free. Um, but I understand that some other people may prefer to go for the, for the other route using Jekyll and stuff like this. So I would love to know uh, for, of anyone who's using this system with Jekyll. And if you've managed to overcome these issues with setting up sync and, and stuff like this, um, I, I would be really interested to see how your system works and, and to learn from you uh, from that. Um, but uh, in the meantime, I really hope uh, you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to help me know that this is content that you like. And I will see you in the next one.